Welcome back to KTV News. My name is Bill Balkett and the newspaper news editor for Enquire. With Labour having a summer of discontent over anti-Semitism, Brexit and other issues, and the attempted censorship of Rosie Duffield for her attendance of a Westminster march against anti-Semitism, I speak to two people, Mary Sullivan, who left the Canterbury Labour Party over the leadership of Rosie Duffield, and Dylan Strain, a current member of the CLP, who's angry and frustrated over the representation of Canterbury MP Rosie Duffield. I discuss the woman herself, anti-Semitism, and the future of the Labour Party. Hope you enjoy. Dylan Strain, can you give us a glimpse into being a member of the CLP at this moment of time with Rosie Duffield as a member of parliament? So basically, um, I can't give you a complete insight into what it is like in the CLP now, but I do know that uh, we really do need to debate Rosie um, and uh, the, the things she's been doing. Uh, and uh, uh, there needs to be a lot more democracy, I believe. And, and Rosie needs to be at a CLP meeting quite soon, I, I think, to, to, to listen to the concerns of, of CLP members. You know. What led to that original motion of, for, of censorship being put forward? Uh, from my point of view... Uh, it was uh, ridiculous words spoken at the Jewish Labour Movement meeting, which the Daily Mail and the Sun reported, saying that she, would, she wouldn't take this lying down. She'd actually go on strike if Jeremy Corbyn didn't implement, implement IHRA. She's just basically doing what she can to show Jeremy yeah. Corbyn in a bad light. Do you think Rosie, as the representative for Canterbury, Whitsport and the surrounding villages is doing an effective job of representing the views of the people here. Well, I understand that the last uh, surgery she had in Whitstable uh, was scheduled for January, which was cancelled. I don't think she's had one since. But I do hear a lot about Rosie and, uh, and anti-Semitism. Do, do I think she's being effective? No, I, do, I don't. I think she's it's more like uh, an MP for Israel than... Westerbourne and Canterbury. When she was, uh, she, when she went to the Jewish conference uh, and she spoke out uh, against anti-Semitism, was that when your perspective of Rosie kind of changed, or as, well, were there any previous encounters uh, or anything in yes, regards to when, her? When we were talking on Twitter, um, she was telling me how lovely West Streeting was. You know, I said, "Really? Do you think so?" <laughs> um, I've heard enough and read enough to to see that you know he's on the right of Labour doing whatever he can to bash... But, but how, ex how, how, how exactly is that, she a Blairite, in your view? It's clear that she's aligned herself with the right wing. On Sunday, she was speaking with uh, uh, Luciana Berger, Ian Austin, who was a, just, just an awful, just an awful MP. Do you think that what you're doing in your, in your activism... It, against Rosie Duffield is just feeding into the other parties and damaging the Labour Party over the summer discontent they've had? Well, I mean, I would argue how much of a, of a you called it a horrible summer. In the media, they've been whipping up this anti-Semitism storm. I'm sorry, but I just don't buy it. They've, they've pushed it too far. So do you think, there's, too far. Do you think there's no anti-Semitism in the Labour Party? No, right? of course there's, there's, uh, there's a tiny minority in the Labour Party who are anti-Semitic. I think it's 0.01% of, of, of Labour members Even the Labour have leader. been done for... Well, well that's... Uh, with respect, Bill, uh, Jeremy Corbyn is not an anti-Semite. He's the least racist uh, politician you could possibly come up with. For 35 years, he campaigned against... Uh, he's been campaigning against uh, racism. Got himself locked up for campaign, campaigning against uh, apartheid. Um, it, uh, for, for Andrew Marr and the media to try and paint him as an anti-Semite is ridiculous and, uh, and, and shame on them, to be honest. So anything regarding when he said that British Jews don't get a British sense of irony and the three main Jewish news publications as well, the Jewish Telegraph and Jewish Times also called him anti-Semitic and the Labour Party institutionally well, racist. If you, if you look at, you know, the editor of one of those Jewish newspapers, Stephen Pollard, what he writes on, on Twitter, I see it all the time. He's, uh, it's, a, it's a nonsense. It's, it's ridiculous. I mean, there's so many ridiculous things he writes. He's so clearly just, uh, just you know, right wing. And, uh, I mean, 
it's it's just beyond farce. They've pushed this too much that I'm afraid most people can just see through this anti-Semitism story. I mean, Wes Streeting and Ian Austin and Rosie Duffield banging on about it on the weekend. I'm sorry, but where's the the latest evidence? It's just it's just a joke. But is Rosie, you know, when she was going to that uh, that march in Westminster, you know, that's her, you know. Uh, exercising her freedoms, her civil liberties, is she not allowed is. to express her political opinions? Of, of course she is. So why but do you that, want to stop her from a, expressing them? That was a Get Corbyn march. That was 30 right-wing Labour MPs going on a march. That was purely a Get Corbyn march. I think it was, that was Ruth Smith's march to get Mark Wadsworth. Mark Wadsworth wasn't even done for anti-Semitism. He was done for, for, for being uh, rude or, or, or saying some sort of... Uh, uh, not very nice comment about Ruth Smith, but he wasn't actually done for anti-Semitism. And Rosie, to align herself on that particular march, that is, uh, that, that's too much. She's been an MP for, for a year, and uh, she only got elected because of Jamie Corbyn and the mm. student... Uh, and the student vote for Corbyn and the policies. Is there any specific policies locally that has frustrated you in any case? Because I know, for, for, for instance, that um, a lot of people weren't happy for her when she can attend a debate on fracking, for example, relating to what's happening in Whitstable. Oh, yes. I mean, I'm glad you brought that up, Bill, because uh, she had this car crash interview with The Guardian um, a, week, a week or two ago where um, the... The, the new story being leaked about the the, the censor motion in the, in the CLP. And she was saying that members needed to get off her back because she was supposed... She needed to go at the fracking debate, but she had to spend all her time uh, dealing with the media that she couldn't... So, in effect, she was saying, well, I'm not doing the fracking debate anyway because the media is more important. I need to give this exclusive to The Guardian... Uh, as a puff piece to show how good I really am and how wrong these these rebel members are, you know. But it was a, a car crash interview. She's not very bright. She's not up to the job, Bill. Doom, thank you very much. Pleasure.